Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, on a recent video, I made mention of the fact that I only have a few ultra portable typewriters left in my collection. In fact, there are three of them, and they're right here. And I thought it would be a fun time to reflect on why these three typewriters have remained in my collection when I've gotten rid of a few other ultra portables over the years and some of the unique things I like about each one and some of the differences. Stay tuned. Well, these three machines are the Olympia Splendid 33, which is a newcomer to my collection, the Groma Calibri, and the Royal Mercury. This is actually the second Royal Mercury I've had in my collection. And uh, all three of these are, in some way or another, favorites of mine. Let's go through and look at each one of them. So what I'm going to give you now are subjective feelings about why I like each of these machines. And we'll start with the Splendid 33. One of the things that first attracted me to this machine is the way the margin adjustment has its own little indicator that is separate from the adjustment itself. So if I reach behind the machine, I can slide the margin setting back and forth. But... What I like is the clean look of just this little protruding indicator with a red line. It makes it very easy to tell where the margin is actually set at. I also like this little red indicator indicating the center of the carriage. That's a nice little touch that a lot of other ultra portables don't have. And then there is the simplicity of the carriage lock. You flip this forward and you move the carriage to the middle and it locks and then the carriage return lever folds down into a stored position and then you can snap on the clamshell lid. I really like that. And while we're here, let's talk about the line spacing. I really like machines with one and a half line spacing and this certainly has it and that is great. A nice space between the lines of text uh, that's less crowded than single line spacing and less open than double line spacing. I really like that. Now, being an ultra portable, it only has a carriage release lever on the right side over here. There's not a corresponding one on the left, and that's where the Groma Calibri has an advantage. But this is true with almost every kind of ultra portable, other than maybe the Lettera 22s and the Calibris. Very few of them have carriage release uh, levers on both sides. I like this little pointer with a hole where you can put your pen or pencil to draw lines. It's very purposeful. Like a lot of the type guides on other typewriters, they'll put a little notch on either side of the little scale here, but I like the fact that they added this little protruding lever with its own hole purposefully for the reason of putting your pen or pencil in. That's kind of a nice touch. Another subtle little touch I really appreciate is the fact that the ribbon spools protrude just beyond the rear edge of the ribbon cover, meaning that I can reach over here and very easily turn them if I have to by hand. And it's just a nice little touch that I can actually see them moving without actually having to lift the ribbon cover off to, to watch. So it doesn't reveal the mechanics of the typewriter too apparently, but it gives you a little glimpse of the edge of the ribbon spool, and I like that. Given the age of this machine, I really like the fact that it has the number one key, and it has an equals and a plus over here, and it has the combination margin release key and the key D jammer, which is a nice feature. And this is also a British keyboard, which I find pleasantly, uh, surprisingly fun to use, because first of all, I can't easily do the dollar sign. There's a pound symbol here. But there's more fractions available, which is kind of fun, actually. I like the fractions. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much a standard uh, Western keyboard. And of course, I really enjoy typing on the Splendid 33. Well, there's no doubt about it. When you look at a Groma Calibri, you're looking at one of the most beautiful typewriters ever made. The sleek, slender lines, the subtle curves to the shape of it, just everything about the design of it is wonderfully subtle and beautiful. And it's one of the thinnest typewriters ever made, of course, also, which lends it a certain notoriety in terms of being an ultra-portable typewriter. They've gone out of their way to do things like add chrome plating to 
even the paper support arm and the margin adjustment controls in the back here, even so far as to chrome plate the edge of the feet on the bottom of the machine. So a lot of extra detail has gone into making these machines very aesthetically beautiful. So clearly having a left hand carriage release button is well appreciated on an ultra portable. And I like the little touch of the spring loaded uh, end of the carriage return lever, which of course makes it easier to store in the case. The control for the disconnect for the line spacing clutch is a little fiddly. It kind of reminds me somewhat of the Hermes rocket, the older style. You have to unscrew this knob, which releases the detent on the line spacing feature. Feature. But other than that, it's okay. It's just a little bit fiddly at times. Not quite as easy as flipping a button or a lever. And here's another thing I've noticed about a lot of European typewriters, most notably Olivetti's, but also this one, is the line spacing selector says one and two, but it's actually one and one half line spacing. If you put it on the single line spacing, there are two clicks on a single line, which indicates it is a half space machine. So when you put it on the so-called two setting, it's three clicks, which is one and a half line spacing. So again, it says one and two, but it's really one and one and a half. And despite the beautiful chrome plating on the paper scale, what I don't like about it is there are no markings like division numbers. What I've had to do is add my own little permanent marker lines every 10 spaces just to give me an idea of where I'm at on the scale. Another thing I don't really like as much is despite the beautiful chrome plating of the margin adjustments, there is no indicator mark or line telling you where exactly the margin is at. And certainly, unlike the Splendid 33, there's no indicator right up here on the scale that accurately tells you where it's at. It's only an approximation. And I do appreciate the aesthetics of these two little triangular protrusions for drawing lines on paper. They have that kind of art deco appearance to them that's just uh, really pleasant to look at. I find the keyboard rather interesting. It seems to be a Western export version. It has the dollar sign above the four. It has the plus equals like a more modern keyboard. The American t typewriter fractions of one half and one quarter. But instead of a number one, it has an exclamation mark over here and then a degree symbol, which is uh, I've always jokingly said this typewriter was made for meteorologists to exclaim their pronouncements about the upcoming weather. 32 degrees! Exclamation mark. Blizzard coming soon! Exclamation mark. Anyways, so it's kind of a puzzle as to why some of these uh, key symbols were chosen. Uh, they could have put the number one here instead, but they had a reason, obviously, and I don't know what that is. One of the other features I really like about this machine is the keycaps stay flat throughout the entire travel, just like the Smith Corona 5 series do. They're articulated. They did go out of their way to make an articulated linkage like that, and I appreciate that about it. I've had to do some work on this machine to fix the skipping problem of the escapement, but also I thought the touch was a little bit too light, and there was like a very kind of a dead feeling at the very start of the keystroke, and I added an extra spring to the universal bar, and it's definitely made the feel of the keys better, but it's not quite as good as the other two ultra portables in this uh, video, but still, it's an easy keystroke to use. A person could enjoy using this machine quite a bit, but because because it's a Pica typeface, that's probably the reason why I don't use it as much as some of the other machines. Well, I happen to have a fondness in my heart for the Royal Mercury. The very first typewriter that I collected when I started getting serious about typewriters was a Royal Mercury. It was actually one year newer than this. The body style was a little bit different. The top of the ribbon cover kind of wedged up higher toward the front and then it had a kind of a fake wood grain front to it. Uh, I found this particular sample uh, just a few years ago and this sample also has the protector sheet for the segment like a shipping fixture and also the protection shipping sleeve for the carriage return lever which I think is just one of those things that's really cool that the owner of this typewriter kept that for so many years.
So in some ways, this is a more utilitarian typewriter than the other two. It doesn't have the pretty looks of the Groma Calibri. It has little indicator marks for the margin settings, but they're not quite as accurate as the Splendid 33 because they sit back a little bit further behind the paper table scale here. But it's still nice. It's okay to have them there, and it still does a pretty good job of pointing to the margins. I think the way the uh, paper support arm flips up on this machine is actually better than the Splendid 33. Splendid 33s, there's a little bent piece on the end, and if it's bent a little bit too much, you have a hard time digging it out of the little recess slot, where this one has a little protrusion right here, and you just push it down and it flips up. And also, the Calibri's is kind of fiddly as well. If it's too far down in the gap, you have to kind of hook it with your fingernail to get it out. This is certainly more utilitarian, a little more useful, and better than the Calibri. Of course, this has a nice scale on the paper bale itself, although there are no rollers on the paper bale. It's just a flat piece of metal that sits flat against the platen. But there's a good scale there. There is a finger, a little raised protrusion here on the end for flipping it up with your right hand, but there's no core corresponding one on the left, of course. And just like many other ultra portables, there's only one carriage release button, and that is right here. There's a lot going on on the left side of the carriage where the line spacing selector is. First of all, if you push the line spacing selector all the way to the rear where there is a red dot, that is the carriage lock. Then if you push it forward one click to the number one, that's the single line spacing, but you might notice that the carriage return lever makes two clicks, so this is a half line spacing machine. The next marking between the one and the two is three half clicks or one and a half line spacing, and then you have, of course, double line spacing. And then there is a zero mark forward of the double line spacing, and that is the disconnect for the line spacing ratchet. That's your variable, line spacing variable. So a lot going on there on the line spacing selector on this machine. So it does lack the carriage release button or lever on the left side, but it does have a dedicated little finger with a hole in it for doing the drawing of lines on the card guide, and I do like that feature. And similar to the uh, Splendid 33, the rear portions of the ribbon spools are visible here, and you can uh, actually uh, Turn them if you need to, uh, like to assist the reversing or whatever. It's just nice to, to, to have them accessible like that. Um, there is a touch adjustment with this machine that the Splendid 33 doesn't have and the Calibri doesn't have. Although, like a lot of these Japanese machines, the touch adjustment doesn't really do all that much. And another additional feature that this machine has that those other two doesn't have is a bichrome setting. That's right, this has a true bichrome setting. The Calibri lacks it as well as the Splendid 33. In the Splendid lineup, you have to go to the 66 or the 99 to get the bichrome setting. One feature I really like about the Mercury is its shift. So all three of these machines are carriage shift machines. And of course, that means you're going to be lifting the weight of the carriage with your pinky finger, the weakest finger of your hand. However, the Mercury has a little trick, is you're not actually lifting the entire carriage, you're pivoting the carriage. So there is a pivot point near the rear of the uh, articulation point of the carriage, and you're only rotating up the front part of the carriage. So that's a really nice design compromise that gives you the simplicity of carriage shifting without the full weight of lifting the carriage. And I mentioned the clean utilitarian lines of this machine. I really like this design of the ribbon cover. It just sort of angles down and has these thin horizontal lines in gray with the Royal logo. It's just such a clean design, a very minimalist, modernist look to it. And uh, it, there's a lot to admire about this. It's not the flash and curves and chrome of the Calibri. This machine speaks functionality first above aesthetics. The Royal Mercury has always had a crisp, snappy feel to me, and both samples I've had, I've never had any issues with piling on of letters or skipping. It seems like the escapement mechanism has been designed uh, very reliably, and I appreciate that. 
You know, it's kind of a difficult question to answer which is my favorite of these three machines because it's kind of like your children. You don't want to necessarily pick favorites because you love them all for different reasons. So it's hard for me to say one in particular is my favorite, although recently the Olympia Splendid 33 has been the one I've been using of these three. Actually, of most any typewriter, this is the one I've been using mostly. But it also has to do with the fact that of these three machines, the Splendid 33 is the one with the smaller typeface. And for some reason, I do prefer a smaller typeface. Though, also, I think it's the touch. I just like the touch of the Splendid 33. And I think um, the Royal Mercury's touch comes in like second to it. That being said, these three right here, I think, for me, uh, really uh, do it well as far as ultra-portable typewriters. And I hope you find a place of peace and joy in your typewriter collecting where you can be creative and do good work. And until next time, be well. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.